So this is a bit of an unusual video that I don't normally make, uh, not in this fashion at least, but something I've been noticing, and I just want to get some feedback, at least from the people who follow me, uh, because I want to see what really their take on this is. And with that, I need to know what direction to take my channel, because YouTube is ever evolving into, I don't know, I can't say it's for the better sake of YouTube, but nonetheless, it is changing. It is changing the way creators make their money. It is changing how creators become successful on YouTube, on this platform. And what I'm talking about is creators don't earn the same amount of money creators used to. Back when the YouTube Partner Program was pretty fresh, they definitely gave creators a much, much larger portion of revenue share than they do now. What I want to talk about was how YouTube is changing and how it is evolving for the better or worse, depending on who you ask. And I guess it really just depends on what kind of content creator you are. Being an automotive content creator sucks because making automotive type videos, you know, working on your cars and modifying your cars and stuff, it's tough because in order to make the videos, cars are expensive, parts are expensive, labor is expensive. It's just a really expensive form of content to make. And it's really, really tough versus just making mindless content or just even making simple content like cooking content, for example, that most people can make at home all the time with simple, simple cooking uh, supplies. It's not like it's super easy to actually make enough money to keep yourself going in the automotive space on YouTube. And I think in general, it's affecting a lot of YouTubers, a lot of content creators across the platform and has been for a while since YouTube uh, decided to reduce the amount of revenue share that they split with their creators. So for example, if a creator had a really good video, let's say it had 100,000 views and they made $500 on that video, after they switched it, they would have got like $300. And that's a big, big difference, especially in the automotive side of YouTube, where it is so expensive to maintain, that made a huge difference. And you probably started noticing a shift in your favorite content creators on what they were doing. You know, they were starting to substitute a lot of their revenue with sponsorships and advertisements within their video from other companies that they were basically endorsing. Then creators were really pushing affiliate links. And all of this was to substitute or subsidize the lack of revenue that they're getting from YouTube since YouTube reduced the amount of revenue share to the creators. And I think this was one of the biggest mistakes YouTube have has done. Now, I'm not sure if really YouTube could have survived. I mean, perhaps they could have, but I don't really know. Considering YouTube is owned by a multi-billion dollar tech company, I would never have thought that YouTube would have encountered such bad operational problems that they would actually have to reduce their cost and by doing so, limiting the amount of money they give to the people who keep their platform going. Suppose they did, suppose they had to, you know, what if they never really needed to do it and they still would have made bonkers amounts of revenue themselves, kept the split the same for the creators so the creators could thrive more I don't know, because if they could have, YouTube would be very different now. You would not see a, a fraction, a quarter, if that, of the amount of paid sponsorships, affiliate links, and just other nonsense you see in today's videos. And sadly, because creators cannot support themselves anymore with just revenue, they have to have affiliate links, they have to have endorsements, they have to have sponsorships, they have to have all these different things in order to make up, especially when they had created a full business with operational costs around YouTube before the change. They had to make up all that difference. What that has done and how YouTube has gone about this, which basically they encourage now, they're creating tools for, for creators that encourages consumption from the viewer. YouTube is no longer what I consider a, a content platform. It's not a platform for sharing videos. It's a platform for marketing and advertising. That's what YouTube has become. And sadly, it's 
not going anywhere anytime soon. It's not going to revert back to how it was. And if anything, it's only going to continue to get worse in the sense that YouTube is going to continue to create tools and incentivize their creators to basically make YouTube a giant advertisement platform. How are creators working with YouTube to make a giant advertising platform? Well, think about it. If a creator is making specific content to just promote a product to sell it to you, how does that make you feel? Because that's what YouTube has done. They have made it easier. They have implemented a basically an affiliate program built right in to YouTube, making it very easy for creators to promote a product that you don't need or want as their form of content in the hopes that they make a commission sale as an affiliate. And then the other side of that is you have a lot of paid sponsorships from creators uh, in their videos. I now see multi-minute sponsorship segments in videos of creators that I've been watching forever. I have to skip right through them. I have to go all the way through it. I don't watch it. I understand from a creator standpoint why they're doing it, but from a viewer standpoint, it's not attractive. It was one thing when someone was like, today's video is sponsored by blah, blah, blah. Get your own blah, blah, blah by using my link in the description down below. That was okay. You know, you're taking up less than 30 seconds of the video with your sponsorship ad. Now we're talking minutes, minutes and minutes of sponsorship ads within your video, and then in the video, you have the YouTube ads that play. So what ends up happening is when you watch your favorite creators now, you click on the video, and nine times out of 10, you greet it with an ad. So you have to sit through that ad at the beginning of the video. Then when the video starts, almost one of the first places most creators put their sponsorship segment is at the very beginning of the video, because statistically, that's where you're gonna have the most viewer retention. That's where they're gonna put it. You sit through an ad to watch the video, then once the video starts, instead of seeing the content you want to see from your creator, you have to sit through their multi-minute uh, sponsorship segment. <laughs> so then once you get through that, then the video starts. And then usually you'll get a few more minutes into the video and then you're hit with that in-video ad right there in the middle. And you're like, you gotta be kidding me. There's another ad. Creators now are actually creating a lot longer content for that purpose. You know, you're seeing content on average from your favorite creators being 20 to 40 minutes in length now because they can fit more uh, advertisement sections in that video for, for YouTube. I forgot to mention something about this. The content being longer isn't necessarily because there's more good stuff to watch. The editing of a lot of these content creators has become a lot more sloppy, but I don't think it's because they don't care. It's intentional. Instead of removing a lot of what they normally would remove to maintain the quality and consistency of the content, they leave that in there. So there's not as much cuts or there's not as much, uh, you know, changes in the, the video. So it's longer. It's basically more raw. And in some cases that could be good, but in a lot of cases, it almost makes the videos feel a lot less polished in order to extend them out for the extra length. So it looks like in a lot of cases, quality has suffered. And then if all of that wasn't enough, another huge thing in the automotive space that creators are doing are giveaways. And giveaways can be a really good source of revenue for creators because generally giveaways are set up to incentivize people to purchase merch and items on their online stores, which generally will have a higher profit margin split than what they're gonna get from YouTube and how YouTube splits the revenue on the videos. So I understand why they do it, but then again, here we are in another area of YouTube where I sit through an ad at the beginning of the video, then once the video starts, I sit through the video's sponsorship segment, and then let's say the video's about entering in for a giveaway, or that's just sprinkled in the video somewhere. Don't forget the giveaway ends, Get put your orders in now and get your entries, which is then another additional form of consumption that you're being fed with. Every time you watch a video, it's just trying to make you spend money now instead of just being a place where you can go and enjoy yourself and get away from reality and the stresses of life. This is what I'm saying is YouTube is no longer a platform for content creation and sharing and thriving as a content creator. YouTube is now just a platform for advertising and marketing. 
And that's why you see so many creators going this way. It's really sad. I understand that they probably have to to keep the lights on, but from a viewer perspective, because as much as I make videos on YouTube, I spend a lot of my time making YouTube videos. I spend just as much time consuming videos. I spend a lot of my life revolving around YouTube. Kind of sad. It is what it is. And from a viewer perspective, that I very much am, it's terrible. And I know it can't be just me, which is why I wanted to make this video and get your thought on it and to see what you think I should do to uh, help grow and, and direct my channel forward. Because I, I have all those same tools, I can put all those same affiliate links in my videos and I can get all the same sponsorships as anyone else. I choose not to because I think it reduces the quality or more or less the experience, the viewing experience. I'd rather retain a positive viewing experience if possible. But because I choose not to do, implement all these different things into my videos, I am probably leaving a significant amount of potential revenue untapped. With how YouTube ads are, and with how everything is, the people who watch my channel, would you appreciate or would it bother you to sit through a sponsorship segment, especially if it's long? Would it bother you if I promoted products in my videos, especially if they're products that don't necessarily, um, you know, align with the theme of my channel, if they're not specific automotive products? Being an automotive channel, if I decided to promote a, you know, erectile dysfunction medication, would you appreciate that? Would you support that in order to support me? You know, you see what I'm saying? It, it's, it's a tough one. And I have yet to make that jump. Now, I'm not saying I haven't implemented certain things in my time with YouTube. Like, some videos are not necessarily sponsored, but I do have affiliate accounts with certain companies like Oxido for uh, lights and stuff that I have done in the past. And I have uh, Amazon affiliate links for certain products. I've linked in some videos, but the, the biggest influence or some of my biggest influences on YouTube are they sponsor products that I would never buy. Crappy earphones, hair loss treatments, questionable security products, prepackaged foods and whatnot. You know, they're, they're things I am never going to buy. And I know I can't just think about it, me, but I do. The way I go about my businesses is, okay, well, if it's gonna cause me to feel bad about it, how is the next person gonna feel? And I always try to look at things in that light. I don't want to have to promote products that don't align with my channels. I don't want to promote products that have a bad reputation or just a bad product in order to subsidize some money. So this is where the bump in the road is for me. Everyone's probably like, man, we don't even bother. We don't care. I don't buy nothing from no one. I just watch what I want to watch, skip through the rest and move on to the next video. I agree. That's what I do too. But at some point, you gotta realize that it's gonna get old. People are going to stop watching videos. It's going to affect a lot of people eventually. Maybe not, I don't know. Americans at least, we're, we're really bad with money and being a capitalistic country, we, we love consumerism. So perhaps everything will be fine. I don't know. I have a hard time getting on board with it. So I just wanted to make this video to get my viewer, at least my viewers, my followers, thoughts on it. Anyone who's watching me for the first time, let me know what you're thinking about all this. Should I put sponsorship segments in my videos? Should I start promoting products? At least if I can find a product that will really align with what I'm doing here. How do you perceive that? Let me know. Put your thoughts in the comments. But otherwise, I think that's going to wrap it up here for the video. Be sure to like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. Keep a lookout for next Cars Creative video. Mm -hmm.